Well, hello all, and welcome back to episode 3 of Fantasy Cartography with Adobe Photoshop. I am RPG Map Maker, and today I'm going to sort of do a video response to a comment that I received uh, so that this channel is more responsive. I'm going to take your comments and uh, take that to heart and make what uh, interests you, because this isn't just about me. This is to give you guys the, uh, the ability to ask questions and, and actually get some sort of response. So Richard wrote that he wanted to see swamps, deserts, and volcanoes, and plains, uh, replacing hills from his first comment, because he had seen hills in a previous tutorial. So let's just go down that list. So swamps. Here you can see a little mini example of what a swamp might look like. You got these little cattails, and you got some shrubs, and you've got straight grass. And then stippling, which is a funny word for dots, lines, things that sort of add that grunge to the interior of the swamp. Uh, to see this in a larger map, this is a map that I previously did where you have this sort of basin, you can call it a swamp, call it a basin, using the word to help your your the person you're making the map for or the people who see your map actually be able to identify the feature. Uh, the text itself is going to give away what the region is and help to differentiate between your fields and your plains and you know your forests and all that kind of things. The woods. you know. So having that text on there uh, is going to help draw your eye to the different features. And so this is one way that I did it. I just added more stippling in between the grasses to give you that idea that it was sort of a swampy region, marshy. Uh, I think that these cattails might uh, work out a lot better. Having straight grass instead of like the kind of grass that you find in your plains or your fields, uh, which is this kind of grass right here, where you've got those leaning over tall grasses, but having the straight sort of reed-like grasses uh, might be appropriate. I also think that maybe if there were little ponds that had the, uh, the cattails sort of around it might help. We'll see, you know, some straight grass and whatnot. But uh, I've had limited success making ponds, so, but you never know. That might look good to have some cattails around a pond and give you the idea that it's sort of a wetter land. But keep in mind that having a bunch of rivers running through the area is also going to help give the visual appearance of having more water in that region and vice versa as we move forward to deserts uh, where pretty much my answer to deserts is dots although there are some other things that you can do for deserts but the lack of information for your eye gives you the feeling of wasteland and then of course using the text desert is going to also help you know so you've got your text it's desert it's kind of an empty region, it's a barren region, there's nothing there. I generally make my dots thicker around the border of the desert and then thinner in through the middle. And that just kind of gives you that idea that it's a desert. You can do some sand lines, some sand dunes or something like that. Um, this is something else that I've recently sort of added to my repertoire, so to speak, is you know, you get your standard hills, but having these sand dune style hills will really bring the desert uh, sort of into perspective. Also the bones, things like that. So I mean there are fantasy features that you can add in to sort of give you that this is a dry place. It's a yucky place. It's not some place you want to walk through. And then of course don't be afraid to use cactuses and bushes. That's going to make it look like a desert because pretty much everybody who has ever been to a desert or seen maps of deserts knows what a cactus looks like. So, for the volcanoes, you can see here I got a, a few little examples. Same way I do mountains, except you add some sort of iconic feature to the top of it. And then, of course, you also have the shape of the overall volcano, where a normal mountain peaks out. The volcano has this little, ooh, that might be a hole where the lava is going to come pouring out onto the ancient civilizations. <laughs> so adding some sort of cloud formation around it might give you the impression that it's a mountain the steam 
or just like I said, just some little icon that sort of differentiates it from the rest of the mountains on your map as a volcano. But uh, nothing, nothing says volcano like having the, uh, the sort of lava-y shape, you know, coming down the the sides of your mountain too. Something to think about. I haven't tried that particular version, but uh, a lot of times when you're looking at map symbols, go to Google and then type in such and such symbol, volcano symbol, or icon, or any of that sort of, you know, clip art. Because when you do those kinds of searches, you're going to see what other people have made, and that's going to give you a great visual library to reference for, okay, well, maybe that's clip art, or hey, that was, you know, so was so's logo, but that's how a mountain looks, or that's how a cactus looks, or, you know, that's how a volcano looks and then putting that in some stylistic version that you draw on your map is really going to give you you know the look and feel that you're looking for because you can integrate the features in based on what you've seen from your visual library so hopefully that covers deserts which is mostly dots now here's a trick to dots is if you go into your brush settings for just a small round brush and go to brush tip shape and then that's spacing just drag that out, you know, three, four hundred percent, and that's going to give you, if you, you know, sit here and zoom in, the ability to just draw equally spaced dots. And then by changing the size, you're going to get more space or less space or you know whatever. But I found that the regular, the regular, the regularity of the spacing gets kind of old on your eyes. So you can't just continuously use the same brush because that's not going to give you the look that you're looking for because there it is it's sort of regularly spaced it doesn't really look like a desert whereas I found that if you see over here in these examples uh, what I've done is I've just made little S's you know you got an S curve here make an S curve coming away from that one and then just follow those S curves around multiple S curves will give you you know some irregularity to that uh, that dot placement. And so you can do that thicker amount sort of around the borders of your deserts. And then just add, you know, you can change the brush spacing obviously out even farther. And then just, you know, you can get some small brush strokes where you're just kind of spacing out some dots. Occasionally just click in some of those dead zones. And there you have it. You're going to have, for long, very decent deserts. And integrated in with your features, too. So as you can see here, I've got some hills. And I just brought the desert in between those hills just a little bit. And that helps to integrate one feature into the next. And then, you know, keep certain features separate from each other. You know, I've got uh, these deserts, but you've got that little bit of spacing before those trees start. You know, there's just a little gap. And that, that uh, section of dots that are thickest around the outside is also sort of a border for the region. So, there's deserts, dry lands, add some cactus, play around with it, have some fun. Okay, so plains, less information is more. If you look at some of these plains that I did, they're like hilly plains, I really added probably too much to these regions. You know, there's too many lines, too many sets of grass. Uh, less information is sometimes more. Uh, this one turned out pretty good in my opinion as a overall map, but I think that uh, if you just focus on sort of this region in the middle that you're calling planes and just making a few little things there and then leaving most of it blank, you'll probably get an overall feel for that region because, I mean, this right here if I actually had a, a brush that was drawing very well, you can see it. This region here is just a lot of grass and dots. There it is. It's a plains. It's fields. It's places in between your other features. Most of the time, the brain is going to assume that the plains are the, the space in between other things. So a lot of times, you probably don't have to do a lot of work on plains because it's sort of a given that if there is no information, like the word desert or you know something of that nature 
your brain is going to assume, okay, that's just grassy plains. And then throwing a few pieces of grass on there is going to just tie that all together. Fiery. Ah, the fiery death. Here we go. Here's a my example of some of those places. I did some stippling in here. I added some extra small rocks, you know, uh, dead trees, the smoke coming off of the mountains. It just gives you that, you know, cracked ground. This may not be the best way to do it. This is the way I chose to do it. This was the, the main volcano that I did for this map. But uh, fiery, fiery lands. Again, you want to go with dry, dead looking things. You know, so add cracks to the ground, do some fun things, play around with it, and see what works for you. Sometimes, again, less could be more, and just having that volcano sitting there with some bones underneath it may be enough to tell people, oh, this is the fiery badlands, you know. Of course, calling it fiery badlands might be more descriptive than, you know, what this one's called. <laughs> but uh, hopefully that gives you some idea. I don't want to bore you completely with you know, running on and on and on about this, but swamps, deserts, volcanoes, things of this nature, fairly easy to pull off as long as you just, you focus on one feature at a time, plan it out, and go, okay, what way am I going to do this? Because the actual technique behind it is going to vary from person to person, you know, but uh, as far as tips and tricks, spacing out the brush for for deserts is, is definitely the big one probably for this one and then just adding more to your swampland areas to make them distinctive from the rest of the features on your map and again don't be afraid to use the word swamp on your map because there's no better way of telling someone on a map you know what is here than to use an actual word because we can pretty much see that this is a forest but the word forest the word woods is not used so if you've got an obvious feature, maybe you don't need to do that. But there's nothing wrong with using the wood woods. Of course, that's going to depend on who is making up the names for your place. If you're actually doing like a commission map, you know, they may want to use the word basin or they may want to use some other terminology. But there really isn't a better way to tell people that something is a swamp than to call it a swamp, to call it the Blue Flow River or whatever, the uh, Winter Bane Hills. Okay, well, you can see that they're hills, but the word just drives it home. It's going to be a forest. It's going to be, you know, whatever it is. So don't forget that labeling things is also important. All right, well, enough run-on sentences from me. Uh, hopefully this was a, a good video response, and uh, you'll add some cattails to your maps to make your swamps look really awesome here in the future. Uh, and with that, here is my plug for the Cartographer's Guild. If you want more experience, uh, be able to ask questions, show your own work and the, the things that you make in your mapping adventures, go and check out this website, www.cartographersguild.com. It really is an exciting community where the guys and gals there are having lots of fun making maps. Uh, there's plenty of tutorials and uh, more things to build your visual library. And uh, it's a very responsive community. You know, give them, give them a little bit of time to answer and get excited about your project, and you never know how much help you might get. This is RPG Mapmaker, and until next time, happy mapping.